many 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 of you guys want to know what camera I use how I mount it to the bike and how I film my races especially after publishing that 200 kilometer long UCI Pro race that I raced and I filmed from beginning to the end uncut nearly five hours of footage on one battery now how did I do that in this video I'll talk about uh, the choice of camera which settings I use and how I mount it to the bike and then how I actually shoot the video and what it roughly takes to edit and get it onto YouTube what's up guys what's up cycling fanatics my name is Jasper and I race road bikes like the freaking viewers of this channel already know I've recorded a whole bunch of races in the last two years and I learned a little bit about what works and what doesn't work and uh, I've been doing shorter races like an hour criterion and then the last year I went to longer races after doing this UCI 1.2 Pro race which was 200 kilometers and I shot it from beginning to the end on the new camera that I have I had so many questions I'm talking about this video right here it's playing in the back I figured the best thing would be to answer you guys in a video explain how this all works a while ago I stumbled across uh, a new camera that I didn't know of before while I was doing this uh, action cam review video we're gonna be testing out three awesome 4k HD action cameras the thing that really got my interest was the battery life of this camera and I'm talking about the drift ghost now I wanted to know a little bit more about this camera so I got in touch with drift and they actually wanted to help me out support my channel so they sent over a whole bunch of cameras and accessories for me to use and to get me covered for my race footage now, there's two models of the drift ghost there's the 4k model and there is the X, which is sort of the entry level camera, which I just introduced, I think this year. And this is the camera that I've been using in my races. And this is the camera that I'm gonna be talking about in this video. So let's get into it. First, uh, I'm gonna talk about the camera, then I'm gonna talk about the mounting, and then I'll give you a very short idea of what it takes to get a video onto my channel. Uh, the camera. I was super happy to find this camera because of its battery life. This X model, I raced it for 200 kilometers, almost five hours. And when I got to the finish, it still had battery left. I was sort of surprised. Um, before I was always using GoPros, either the four black or the session, the four and the five, they don't last so long. So the problem with that is I have to concentrate on the camera starting and stopping it during the race while I'm racing and then I notice the battery is low and I still want to record the finish so I'm not going to record the, the middle part of the race. When it's about to hit the sprint I have to remember to press start on the camera. It's getting all my attention away from actually racing so that's not a good thing. The other problem is that this camera is not made anymore so the only thing you can buy is refurbished models but they're not making new sessions so they're gonna die at some point so we need to go into a new camera and this one i don't have to worry about if it's gonna last the race this one is gonna last for five hours there's even an extension battery which is gonna make it last for eight hours. I won't be doing any eight hour races, but if you have a long ride or if you're commuting every day and you don't wanna charge it every day, that's a good thing. So starting to work with this camera, I had to get used to it a little bit. There's three buttons at the top, a very small little screen. You need to sort of know which button is what, but at the end, it's very easy. You're gonna turn it on with one button and then there's a green light and you're gonna press play with the same button there's a red blinking light and it's rolling and that's it when the settings are right when it's mounted on my bike that's all i do i turn it on and i press play and i leave it on for the entire race don't have to think about it press it again turns off and uh you've got your footage 
Cool feature about this camera, it has a rotating lens. So whenever you mount it like this, you can rotate the lens up and you, your image will still be level. So that's really nice. Whenever you mount it on a slight angle, just rotate the lens till it's upwards like this. So when I mount it on the handlebars, underneath the handlebar, I can just rotate the lens up and don't have to worry about rotating the image later or whatever. So that's a, a nice feature. Also, I like the aerodynamic de design. It looks like a bullet, which is good. Aerodynamics is always a big thing in cycling. So that's nice. It isn't that heavy either. So all good things. I'm actually not too worried about the weight. A lot of people ask me like, is the camera gonna slow you down? Because you have one camera at the front or two and it's aerodynamically and weight and everything. Most races are flat. So 120 grams of this camera is not gonna make that big of a difference. However, if you do a climbing race, I guess every little bit of weight is gonna make a difference. But I don't really do climbing because I'm a heavy guy. The recording settings of the Ghost X are very limited. Because this is an entry level camera, it only shoots in 1080p. Now that's not a big problem because I don't ever record in anything more than 1080p, but I would prefer to have a little bit more options in frame rate. Right now, 30 frames a second is the highest I can go. It's okay, it gets me the footage that I need. Uh, as it comes to image quality, again, it's an entry level camera, image quality is not top notch. But I guess that's also why it lasts for so long because there's probably a different processor in it that doesn't use as much battery, whatever. The Ghost 4K model has way better image quality, but it doesn't last for five hours. So it's one thing or the other. Now the Drift has a couple other features like uh, the clone mode where you can set one camera to the master, the other to the slave. And when you hit record on one, they're gonna both start rolling, which is pretty cool. And stop, and they both stop. Every setting will be transferred to the clone camera as well. Drift has a tutorial about this in their channel, so I'll link it below if you want to know more about this specific mode. It also has a tagging mode, which you can sort of, let's say I'm doing a, a, um, a fun ride on my bike. I have the camera in the front. I don't want to film the whole ride, but I just want to get these really cool parts of the ride, but I never know when it's gonna happen. I put it on the tag mode, and when I hit play, it's gonna record everything before I press play. So it's gonna be like a couple minutes before you press the button, it's actually gonna save that footage. So maybe you get into a crash where you weren't shooting. If you hit the play button after you crashed, you still have it on video. That's pretty cool. But I'm not planning to crash anyway, so. And then like pretty much every product nowadays, also Drift has a uh, app. You can connect the camera, you can live stream, with the app. Uh, I haven't used live streaming yet, but I am gonna check it out because that might be a really cool feature. Uh, ch changing settings on the app is easier than on the camera itself, so it might be a very handy thing. Uh, another thing is the waterproofing of this camera. They claim it's water resistant to um, IPX4, which means you can ride it in the rain. I've ridden it, I have to say, I've ridden it in a race racing in the rain and I came back after the race and the camera was dead. So the water got into the camera, uh, I sent a message to Drift, they told me this should not happen because it should be waterproof to ride in the rain. So they sent me a new one straight away. They're also making silicon cases for these cameras so they get even more waterproof. If you're really gonna ride in the rain, it's best to use one of these, which is uh, like a waterproof case. It's gonna get a little bit bulky. So, I mean, if I go diving, I don't care. I really wanna use this. If I do a race and it might be raining, I prefer not to use this big bulky rain case. But if it's gonna be a two hour long race in the rain, then yes, I'm gonna use it, but maybe then I don't even want to race. <laughs> And then the audio quality, when you're riding, the wind noise is insane. It's, it's, it does a very weird thing to the audio. 
I don't really use the audio of my cameras uh, in the races, so I don't mind so much, but there's the option to mount a, a microphone. Uh, also sold by Drift, this will provide with good audio. So that's it, my pros and cons. In short, very good battery life. I really like it, that's the main reason I'm gonna use this camera. I like the aerodynamic design, it's not very heavy. And then uh, I think they can improve on water resistance and on image and sound quality a little bit. Then mounting it to the bike, very important. I use this third party mount that I uh, attach to my handlebar. My bike computer goes on top and at the bottom there's this little extra mount and I can use this adapter of um, drift to attach the camera on the bottom of this mount. So it's all in one mount, keeps my handlebar nice and clean and it's super sturdy for racing. I've had people of the organization come to me before the race, they heard I had a camera and they wanted to check out if it was solid or not. So I try to use very solid mounts, I prefer to use some type of metal mounts because they don't break as easily. I've had other mounts breaking during races and stuff before, not the drift mounts but the GoPro mounts. So I really try to right now stay on the super sturdy metal mounting options. The drift actually provides you with this handlebar mount. The mount is okay, it works fine, very easy to uh, clip on the camera and you can change the angles in very different ways and it, it attaches on pretty much any bar, very easy to put on and off, but I don't need that much flexibility during a race, I'm just gonna stick it on before and leave it. So I prefer to still go with the most sturdy option. On the back, I've got this third party mount that attaches to my saddle rail, and I have sort of the same way of uh, attaching the camera to the saddle rail. So it has a nice clean angle looking back, nothing um, in the way of the camera. It's safe and uh, you, you can see everything that happens behind you. Which was very cool in the race that I filmed it. So many positive replies on that. Having two cameras on the bike, it requires a lot more editing work. So it, it, this, this video really took me a lot of work, but I think the result was really, really cool. So. Uh, I, I think I'm gonna do that more in the next races, uh, sort of depends on if I can find the time. There's also the option to mount it on your helmet. Drift does provide helmet straps. Uh, personally, I would not use these straps when I was racing because, you know, when you race, you have rules and stuff and you just want everything to be very, nice and clean but but the other option would be to stick it onto the helmet with one of these sticky mounts and that would actually be a very good option now in the united states you can mount the camera on your head on your helmet in holland they don't allow it they, it needs to be mounted on the bike so that's why i always race with the camera on my bike because i want to have the same footage whether i'm in the states or in the netherlands so how do i actually create a video to YouTube. Well, this is actually, this can be another two videos that I'm gonna talk about, but there's so many tutorials you can find on how to get your telemetry data on the video. I use uh, Garmin Verb software. Uh, the software of Garmin Verb is ridiculously bad actually, but it's, it's one of few options you have to put data on the screen. So I use this software, I synchronize the GPS file that comes from my cycling computer with the video. Now the downside is that the cameras nowadays make clips every so many minutes, so you have to synchronize every single video again and again. It's a lot of work. And then I export the whole thing and then I import the whole thing into Premiere because I, I edit my videos in Adobe Premiere. With the front and the rear camera video that I did, everything was double because every step I had to do it twice. And then in Premiere, I will cut and chop off the whole footage. I will see where everything happened in the race. Then I'm gonna 
change it and clip it up again then i'm gonna do a voice over then i'm gonna take out all the uhs and ahs and buts and mistakes in the voice over and make it a whole nice flowing video and 10 hours later we have a video so it's a lot of work there's many different tutorials i will link a couple down below where you can find tutorials about how to put the telemetry data on the screen and all that stuff i can make another tutorial but i don't think that's necessary because they're already out there so go check it out that's it if you're interested in buying this camera uh, drift is pitching in a 10 percent discount for you guys so go check out the discount code in the description you can use it in the european or the U usa website and it gets a 10 percent discount on anything on their website and uh, guys give me a like if you appreciate this video comment down below if you have other big questions about cameras shooting video during races or whatever and then i'm gonna see you next time see ya uh, support my channel so to send over oh. i dropped the camera over there so they send over a whole Insert card. Okay, this one doesn't have a memory card. That's why it doesn't work.